Joined by Elsie Kanza, the head of Africa at the World Economic Forum, and she joins us from our Seapoint studio in Cape Town. Elsie, lovely to have you. Thanks very much for being our guest here. Thank you very much for having me. So we see that the fourth industrial revolution is stealing center stage at the event this year. Um, I suppose let's get straight into it. Is Africa ready for it? Africa is uh, working on it, and it's fair to say that the entire world is uh, grappling with the reality of uh, this new era of the fourth industrial revolution, um, and Africa is, is right there in the center um, of grappling with it. Uh, what we're seeing globally is that technology is moving much faster than the capacity of policymakers and regulators um, to address uh, the various aspects, both the upsides and downsides. And so through the Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, we're working um, in tandem with governments uh, from around the world, including South Africa, and alongside of companies that are developing uh, these uh, new technologies to see how best we can develop global protocols that work for everyone. So, you know, there are concerns on the continent, and I think it's, it's a, it, I suppose that it amounts to educating people about what the enforced fourth industrial revolution is actually all about because there's a lot of concern that machine learning will replace real people jobs uh, and the continent is already faced with a huge unemployment challenge. L let's, let's get your thoughts on this. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're faced with two twin challenges. Uh, one is how we can continue to boost our uh, human capabilities in terms of closing the education gap and we'll be talking about that. Uh, but what we're increasingly seeing uh, with these new technologies is um, a need to upskill and reskill, um, as we call it. So a lot of the new industries that are being driven by new technologies right now did not exist uh, more than 10 years ago. And easily we're going to see new technologies emerge. So we need to think very differently about how we work, how we learn, uh, continuous learning, uh, at the same time how we can deploy these new uh, forms of learning, for instance, through augmented reality or AI to help us close um, our gaps, whether it's not enough teachers, not enough books. Um, and that's a key challenge. And um, what we essentially encourage or encouraging conversations about is how Africans can innovate and essentially tailor these new technologies to the context that we're in. Uh, because it's really a continuum. The fourth industrial revolution is not entirely displacing the first, second or third, uh, but it's really a continuum on the spectrum of transformation. Mm. I, I want to talk about the, the business of, of South Africa, one would imagine. Our President Cyril Ramaphosa is leading a government delegation of, 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 of our ministers, more than 10 ministers. I mean, we've got our finance minister there, our deputy president, our trade and industry minister, health minister, public enterprises, just to name a few. How does South Africa fare in attracting investment? I know that there have been a lot of concerns that many of our, our policies are not necessarily conducive to economic growth, uh, just one being land expropriation without compensation. And this, of course, is a, is a great fear for investors. So let's get your views on that. Right. So uh, I'm glad you highlighted uh, the strong presence by the South African government. This is very much... Um, our home uh, in Africa, given that South Africa was the genesis of the World Economic Forum on Africa uh, going back to 1990. So this is the 28th edition. Um, and what's critical is that you see that during that period where South Africa played a leadership role um, in galvanizing the global community to advance uh, South Africa, Southern Africa, and the rest of Africa, um, that um, we need to think about different ways in which we can forge um, partnerships and these partnerships entail looking at what kinds of policy reforms need to take place at the same time it's also how we can ensure that our industries are regionally and globally competitive uh, but not leaving behind civil society as well so it's really a combination of actors um, that we bring together and look at the complexities and, and the dynamics um, that we're facing and then within that see how the right investments can be made to ensure that we're driving impact both nationally regionally as well as globally and then just finally let's let's sort of look at other issues we 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 are going to be obviously seeing coming up in discussion and that of course is the, is the future of state-owned entities and uh, companies here in south africa as well as infrastructure universal health coverage all of these which are on are of national importance to 
to South Africa. And then, of course, climate change and the digital economy. Uh, three days to cover all of this. It's a lot. How is the event actually going to be structured? It's a, it's a very good point. Um, I personally refer to it as an annual general meeting. Our communities of stakeholders uh, who were top leaders in their, different, uh, in their different areas, government, business, civil society, academia, we have religious leaders, uh, arts and culture leaders. It, what's critical is that all these actors are working throughout the year uh, on critical issues. You mentioned the digital economy. As an example, we have initiatives uh, related to closing uh, the internet gap, access to the internet, uh, digital identities, looking at digital finance. Um, so all of these activities take place uh, in different parts of the continent. We also have gatherings um, around the world. And so when we convene uh, for the regional summit, essentially we're taking stock of what progress has been made over the past year. Um, galvanizing um, additional support uh, where more partners uh, and stakeholders are needed so we can scale up or replicate as well as sharing what lessons have been learned and then looking forward to the year ahead and, and planning how we can forge uh, forward uh, because as you mentioned new challenges emerge uh, for instance climate change this year has really gained momentum and it forces us to think differently uh, based on the current uh, initiatives about how we're going to or what we're going to focus on in the year ahead. All right, we leave it there. We look forward to seeing some of the uh, issues that come out of it and uh, we'll be following closely and reporting on it right here on SABC. Thanks again to my guest, Elsie Kanza, who is the head of Africa at the World Economic Forum. Uh, the WF Africa kicks off tomorrow in Cape Town under the theme Shaping Inclusive Growth and Shared Futures in the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Thanks very much, Elsie.